Howdy folks, welcome back to the Carnage, <laughs> which is this uh, Z1R. Alright, I had some other stuff filmed uh, that I was going to start this second part with, but uh, that's, I scrapped that because uh, I wanted to kind of update you where we're at and show you the next steps. Uh, essentially, um, what I ended up doing is um, I did, as you saw from the first video, the uh, compression testing found that number one and two were lower than three and four, and, and they're out of spec as far as comparing the sides or individual cylinders to one another. Uh, and I, I can't, and of course it smokes when it runs, it burns some oil. And so I ran a leak down test on each cylinder, and I can't really, there's no smoking gun from the leak down test, in other words. I, I don't have any significant loss uh, of any air from either the valve side or in the crankcase side. Uh, so uh, what I'm thinking is um, uh, under certain, you know, under the compression uh, shot, you know, the actual velocity of the compression stroke, it is bypassing the compression rings at least on one and two, in particular number one here more than the other four or the other two that are low, I should say. And so if you understand what I'm saying here, I think when you have that uh, rapid squish, it's just bypassing a little bit. And because I, I real honestly cannot find... A, uh, a like I said, a smoking gun. Yeah, I can hear it, you know, bypassing into the crankcase, and you can hear it right through with this head cover off. You can hear it through the cam chain tunnel that goes right down the crankcase. Yes, but you know, nothing more than I would expect normally. Maybe a little bit more. So I'm going with rings because it's smoking, of course. And there's a bunch of other problems here too. So I talked to the customer and I said, look, I said if you want to really do a, you know, a good job on this engine as far as cleaning it up and so forth, uh, we really need to pull it. And then we'll go ahead and tear it down, you know, on a stand. And he said, that's fine. So that is why we are torn up to the point we are right now, because I naturally I have the exhaust off and I've taken the sprocket off and the chain. And of course, found more problems. As you can see here, the shifter shaft is toast. Um, there's a lot of jury rigging that's gone on on this bike. It's pretty terrible. As I go along, I mean, the fasteners are screwed up. The, just so many things are wrong. And I'm making a list as we go. It's kind of right over there, you see it. And uh, I'm going to be, uh, you know, figuring out what I need to, to get ultimately from the smallest fastener to the largest part. So anyway... Stand by. I'm going to set you up in the stand momentarily. And what we're going to do is going to go over how I pull one of these out. Um, I have a special rig that I'll go over with you. I'll give you a sneak peek that it's right up there on the ceiling. And naturally the fan <laughs> gets turned off. But um, I, I, I'll show you how I do it. And it's kind of interesting, I think. And it's worked. I've pulled, what, three or four engines with this um, uh, setup so far. Uh, let's see. Uh, KZ twice, a GPZ once, and a Band of 1200. So yeah, I've done a um, number of engines with this um, setup works pretty good. So stand by, I'll set you up like I said, and we'll go and I'll show you what we do. All right, folks, we got a change in plans here. Um, instead of taking the engine out as a whole, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull the top end off of it. And, and the frame here just makes no sense to have to wrestle around the entire engine when it's got to come apart anyway. And of course, we can pretty easily take it. The, uh, top end off inside the frame here so I mean hell it's designed to do that may have to clear out these um, this is for oil cooler lines the aftermarket oil cooler I think this is a yeah, it's a Lockhart oil you know um, aftermarket gonna get this out of the way this tank bump or anything loose up here we're just gonna get out of the way pretty much but yeah let's go ahead we'll, we'll go ahead and just take the um, top end off take the cams out you know and do the whole thing you know and, and then you know that way it'll be a lot easier to get out because when you when you see my rig you'll understand that we have to capture these two uh over here in the front we got to capture these two upper well actually the only ones in the front uh engine mount uh locations for the for the actual lift points normally what i do is to jack the motor up uh, and then uh, capture those and then you know do the same with the rear and then i can just uh, pull it out. I, I'll give you. A, I'll give you a spoiler alert on, on this particular on a KZ one thousand. What, what you have to do is you have to have the engine angled like this. So in other words, you have to have it angled toward the left side of the um, bike, um, and then how you want to actually introduce it or remove it from the frame is in a like an upward angle. 
a compound angle basically. In other words, the motor just being sideways is not necessarily going to pull out that way. You have to kind of go out at an angle in the frame. You'll see what I mean when we pull it. Of course, pulling it without the head and the jugs on is going to be pretty easy. There's going to be a crap load of room. It's putting it back in. You'll see that. So, whoops, let's get you set up where you need to be and uh, we'll take her apart. Um, disconnect the ch a cam chain tensioner, which is just, you know, this thing is already locked in place. The way these things work are um, to, to actually hold them in a in a tight position. You you uh, you know once it you know once it runs and you know the chain takes up slack or loosens up a little bit. What you want to do is you just undo these guys here, this lock nut, and then just undo the bolt. That allows it to pop forward and take up any slack. And then you just tighten it back up and then lock the, the bolt down. So it's pretty easy, you know. Uh, we're just going to take it off. It's not going to be a problem. Putting it back on, that also allows us to lock the plunger in so we're not trying to break the chain. <laughs> break the chain! So we're going to do it that way. Um, I'm going to rotate this over to top dead center. I think it actually may be there right now based upon the way these cams look, but I'll double check. Not that it's going to make a whole hell of a lot of sense because if the engine gets torn apart, we're gonna put a new cam chain on it anyway, and the crank's gonna be out of it, so, but you know, I'll just double check, it's kinda of just good practice. I put everything in bags. You'll see me bag stuff. I'm not gonna show you each one, I'm just gonna show you this one. Everything's in bags and labeled.
Well, let's see. This is the, yeah. Okay, so this would be the right side, or that side over there. And that cap for this number four cap, or I should say the, the bearing, the actual cap itself, is a little damaged, a um, little piece of aluminum, almost like it has too much lateral thrust. So uh, how that is managed is by this guy looks like a spool um, on the left side. It captures that with the other one and, um, you know, keeps it from moving. But I'm not really sure why. We're going to have to mic all this up and measure it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not too, it's a little scored, just a little bit. But, um, I mean, we may have to scrap this cam, or maybe both of them, I don't know. But we're going to have to uh, mic them up and measure them first. But. And, uh, you know, some of, the, uh, some of the pins stay in, but that's okay. We'll get them out later with a uh, pin remover. I can take them out now. It really doesn't matter. As long as they're not loose, they're not going to fall on the motor. This is probably not necessary either because we're going to take the engine apart. But it's just something I do. And when I pull ahead, what I end up doing is I just release this and let it way let it go way down into the block, and then um, just grab this when the head comes off and swap hands, and then then you're done. So there is a procedure for uh, removing the cylinder head, or at least installing it. I don't remember if there's one for removing it. Um, so I'm I'm almost positive that that procedure is uh, you know like crosswise and, and back and forth. I'm gonna go look that up and simply reverse it. So it's gonna be outside to in. It'll start with the two little 10 millimeter guys over here and on the other side, and then we'll, we'll you know, reverse it. Uh, it doesn't really say to do that, but that's just good practice to do that. Well, close enough. <laughs> Some of those weren't even tight. So it was ever in here, did not put those back in. Um, I mean, the, the uh, regular stock hardware doesn't get that tight. I forgot what it is. It's only like 17 foot pounds or something like that. I can't really remember. Oops. But. Um, you know, when you have the aftermarkets, it goes progressively up depending on the combination, whether it's like the studs and, you know, aftermarket studs with stock, um, stock nuts or, you know, everything's aftermarket. It goes all the way up to 30 foot pounds, but on these big ones, but none of these were at that. Oh, did I miss one? Son of a gun. That yeah, happens. I mean, it's, you know, it's not super critical, but, you know, the way this thing is, it's, it's just not that tight anyway so yeah I did miss this one I'm sorry oh well yeah it's you know it's gonna probably get done anyway I, I just a little bit concerned about that um, about that cam I don't like that Um, I'm going to go off camera real quick. I'm going to take these uh, bottom of the camshaft bearings out and label them. Uh, they, they have to go back in the exact same spot, assuming I use them over again. And, and I already have each one bagged. So what I'll simply do is, for example, this is uh, number one cap here on the left front. So what we'll do is, well, and it'll say that actually in the, in the block here somewhere. Like, here it is, C1. There's a one right there. It's kind of hard to see. So this, in the, in the head, what am I saying block? Into the casting, rather. So anyway, there's number one. Um, so we want to put this as like one L for one left and then one R for for right, you know, and then do it that way. I'm going to do that off camera. We'll come right back. I just want to secure them 
So when I tap on it, start moving it around, they don't fly off and I lose them. All right, that's done. And you know, the corresponding bearing for that side of the cap is still in the cap itself, so I don't have to worry about that. So, all right, um, everything's out. Double, triple check as far as the fasteners. Had the uh, head stud nuts, these two 10 millimeter, or I should say M6 bolts with 10 millimeter heads on the ends. I'm just gonna see, I, you know, I have a stinking suspicion this is gonna move pretty easy. Maybe not. Light tappy tap tap. Hmm. I'm sure we didn't forget anything. I don't think so. That'd be sometimes these brass um there there's four copper washers on the head, two on this side outside and two on the other side, because these are actually oil passages. Uh, the uh, cylinder block is bigger. Cylinder block is larger where those holes are in oil. I forgot which one is up and down or they're both down. I forgot which, but um, I think this is the pressure side because the main oil gallery is right here. It runs across, but um, I forgot which. But at any rate, the uh, yeah, that, that's why they're like that. So they have to have these up here to seal them off because they're under some pressure. Not that this engine has a lot of oil pressure. Being roller, uh, roller bearing, um, you know, mains, it's like, thing might generate two or three PSI when it's hot running at you know 4500 RPM or whatever it is maybe six so it's not a big deal but anyway I digress we don't want to digress too much and I certainly don't want to chip nothing so let's all right starting to move I just released the chain to let it fall right down in the motor with the wire connected and the, or the wire you know the, this wire around the chain but not connected to the frame or anything. Who cares? It's going to stick up anyway when we take the head off of the uh, off the cylinder block, and then you know you can retrieve your chain at that point. So if you're doing this and you're going to put them right back on the engine with it in the frame, um, you know it's not a big deal. Um, you know just let it fall with this wire on it, and you pull it out later. It's not like it's the end of the world. This that was a um, exhaust gasket. See, that's all right. The donut. The donut. I'm gonna soak up a little oil here so it doesn't go everywhere. The donut. I'm not gonna worry about the lifters and the shims right now. They ain't going nowhere. Trust me with that oil. Feel the oil in there, they're stuck in there like like glue. So what we want to do now is just break this loose. I don't even take the um, nuts out. As long as they're disconnected, they're going to sit right there and be just fine. You just got to watch the washers um, on the ends in particular here that they don't fall into your motor. But the chances of that happen are pretty slim to none. You can take everything off if you want, but you really don't need to. Oh, all right, here we go. It's coming up. I'm going to come out my side, assuming I can get enough clearance, and just pull it out and let the wires come through the cam chain tunnel. Make sure I'm not hooked on anything, and this thing should come right off. I mean, I got the clearance. Clearance. And here we are. Oh, kidoki. Let's take a look at what we got. All right, let's take a look at what we got. You zoom me up here a little bit. Here's our number one that was giving us some trouble. We're going to have to rotate this motor around, of course, to. Um, check number one and you just have to keep tension on the cam chain so it doesn't bang up and damage it down below uh, when you do that you certainly most you most certainly can bar these motors over without any cam in them you just have to be really really careful when you do it but right now you know this just doesn't look bad number two well there's a little, look at this number three yeah, oh wow look at that i'm going to show you that one hang on hang on Look at that. And number three had good compression. God, there's a there's a groove right at the top here, about three quarters of an inch, half inch down. That's a really big notch. So that's no good. Notch. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at one and four. There's a little bit of grooving in two. I don't know yet, but damn, you can still see the. So you can still see the. Um, Owning. Assuming somebody did that last time this was a part, I don't know. 
Yeah, it doesn't look very good either. Yeah, it looks like a... Yeah. You know what? I'll tell you what. That does not look like a machine shop, um, you know, good quality hone. This looks like a, like a stone hone that somebody did on it. Um, the, the angle of the hone is incorrect. Should be about 40 to 45 degrees. So that means that they ran the hone too fast and didn't go in and out slow enough if you know what I mean so I don't like the uh, look of that that is definitely a home brew um, hone on that that's no good plus just you know it's, yeah, I don't know <laughs> let's bar it over with the um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we'll bring you back when I get the motor turned so we can see one and four all right so here's one this is the one with our lowest compression it very well meant it may have been the head gasket too because um, th these were so loose you know I, I don't know if it could and that would really explain what was going on because when it reached when it reached a certain compression if the uh, piston and the cylinder were capable of increasing a compression you know higher than 120 where I ultimately I, I got it I'll explain that here in a second the um, uh, you know it, it could have been blowing out and see a little bit of evidence of that occurring right over here uh, on the left side of it it looks like and this is a fairly new head gasket so again somebody's been in here you don't see any up here but you do over here the same over here you may have a little bit there I don't really know 100% if that's it or not uh, it could be um, who knows but uh, definitely not um, good uh, I, you know what could also cause this is the honing itself um, because the honing on this number one in particular is almost like straight across like circular without hardly any angle to it or compound angle to it at all and so if you have honing where it essentially creates circular scratches it's too much surface area on the piston rings and therefore you're going to lose compression around that that's why the hone uh, a professional hone is about four what is it 40 45 or 46 degrees or something like that where again you go in you have a slower rpm on the hone and a faster RPM on the plunge and return, and that gives you a, a steeper, um, you know, grooving or, or steeper honing. Uh, plus, there are, there are some vertical scratches in here. So, yeah, this thing definitely needed to be pulled, or it's it's just not good. Plus, it's burning oil. So, you know, we'll take a look at the rings when we get the the cylinder off, which we'll do momentarily here. I got a couple, do a couple things, and then we'll we'll take that off. Cylinder block. Sometimes these can be a real prick to get off. I'm not, I'm, I'm guessing this has been off. I don't think anybody tried to hone it with the, with it in place. I hope the hell they didn't, but uh, sure would explain a lot. These little, these little guys are called dampers. Uh, and uh, if you can find them new, replace them. But there is a, um, there will be like an up on them. You gotta put them in a certain way, direction. So we'll just leave them alone right now. This, of course, is the uh, cam chain tensioner side, so it's pushing against it that way. Really just an idler. And a tensioner. This is just a pure idler. It's kind of wore out, too, to be honest with you. All right, deal with that later. We don't have to worry about the um, the cam chain guide that's down on the back side until we take this off. That's down below. I mean, it's in the cylinder block, but it's it's you know it's just extends down. It's not going to be a problem for us. But uh, so let's see. That's yeah. See um, here. This is what I wanted to show you. The um, the main oil gallery on these is right here. It runs right along this section of the engine in fact behind this cover I think there'll be a plug or something caps that off it runs right through this way you can kind of see it over there that a cap on the other side there is actually where you would put like a oil pressure gauge so this is why we have the taps on this uh, for the uh, discharge and return and I don't remember I think this is the discharge yeah this will be your pressure discharge going into the um, pressure side rather going into the uh, oil cooler 
this would be a return going directly into the cylinder block or the um, crankcase. Ugh. I can't talk today. Okay, so eh, just a side note. So we're just going to leave that chain laying down in there right now. It doesn't really matter. So this is definitely a stock KZ1000 head gasket. I've actually got a new one of these in stock. I'm going to mic this up and make sure it's it's at uh, stock size, what is that, 69 or 70 millimeter? Um, I gotta double check that, but it sure doesn't look like it's been bored. I mean, look at the, look at the sleeves on this thing. They, they're mass, you know, they're massively thick, so normally they'd be a lot thinner up here. You can see them kind of cut back uh, if, uh, if the thing's been modified a little bit, but it doesn't look like it has, which is good. I'm sick of working on modified shit. Studs look good. Okay, so let's, um. I'll leave that there for now. Let's see if we can get that broke loose. There's going to be a couple pins down in here too for alignment. Sometimes these want to really, really stick. So we got to be real careful with it uh, and just kind of work it out, tappy tap tap a little bit. I forgot. I know you're yelling at your screen right now. That's all right. I didn't do any damage. I forgot about these. On each side of the cylinder block, little notches and that's the pry points to pop this off uh, I think there's only two of them one on each side to get it loose yeah I forgot about that Doy. so what you do is you got to use a you know a nice quality screwdriver and get in there and you know try to not do any damage to that so we'll just use a vessel flathead and see if it fits pretty good. I forgot. So sue me. We'll tap it as well. There it goes. Gasket was holding me up. Oh boy. I don't want to go too crazy with her, but. All right, we'll work on this for a bit off camera and then we'll get her off. All right, so let's see where we're at here. Let's do a, a quick exam and a wrap up and then we'll outro this and be done. Uh, okay, so here we got, um, you know, nothing looks terrible that looks about normal wear, except for I already showed you on the, uh, the way the cylinders are honed. We'll take a closer look at that here in a minute. But I just did some very preliminary measuring. I measured number two piston, because uh, I can get at that one, number two or three right now. And I measured number two bore and right now I can tell you that we're out of spec. Um, not so much on the piston. The piston diameter is at, um, let's see, it's at 254, I think. That's what it was, or 253, something like that. I can't remember which, but it's right at one of these two. But the, the bore diameter is the important one. I'm already at 256, so a 2.756 rather 2.756 this is all converted over to imperial of course so 70 to 70.012 millimeters converts over to here this is service limit 2.759 so we are really close to this already if you take this and subtract it from what we actually have on a piston i come up with about two and a half to three thousandths which is too much clearance when we're supposed to have one and a half probably one to two it little over two and a half one and a half thousandths piston clearance being optimal that would be three quarters of a of a thousandth or a point um, zero 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 seven five on each side as opposed to uh you know um what we got now which is probably almost a thousandth and a quarter so basically what we have is that's one of the reasons why we have some compression issues who knows what the ring status is i don't know i don't know the bores don't look good, as I said before. This is some sort of a, you know, backdoor 
backyard hone job, no question about it. That looks pretty crappy. And so, you know, yeah, there's three, look at that. So, you know, we know, and three and four were the better of the of the uh, four, isn't that something? But again, I don't think this, um, head, this uh, head was torqued down properly. So anyway, a lot of problems here. Where we're gonna have to go with this is where we end up always going. We're gonna have to go at least um, half, you know, uh, 0.5 millimeter, half millimeter oversize. I imagine this will clean up with that. If not, maybe a one millimeter oversized piston stock. This, these are stock pistons most definitely, and they are at the stock size, which is basically 70 millimeter. So uh, what we'll do is we will um, get these board and or just honed out to, um, to the appropriate size for a new set of pistons. It'll be pretty easy to find these, just one millimeter over, I'm pretty sure. Uh, most likely like Weissco or something like that. We'll pick up four of them with the rings, send this out um, to a place I normally use, and we'll just have them do it. It'll be really lickety split quick. Next video, we'll take a look at the cylinder head in detail. We'll turn it over and take a look at it. I just don't have any more time here. This is getting long enough. So we'll close it out. We just went over you know, how to take these top ends apart. Uh, next video also, hopefully we'll get this engine out of the frame and put it into this um, rig that we have here. I'll show you that really quick. It's um, kind of cool. This came with the um, the other engine builder for another job made this. It's um, it's designed, of course, for a KZ-1000 engine. Uh, and so uh, you put these threaded rods in and they capture the appropriate uh, engine bolt or engine mount locations on the, uh, crank, on the case, on the crankcase, on the canker case. So we're going to um, put that over there, get that... Um, Get that going so yeah um okay so that's pretty much it well I'll spot in on this one like i said we're going to close it out but next time we'll get into it a little bit further so until then thanks for watching uh, subscribe if you want if not that's fine too it's no big deal i just kind of enjoy doing this we'll tackle the rest of this uh, very rare and unique um uh, kz1000 model together see you then